Uh, so what we're going to go over today, guys, welcome everyone to the live session for today. And what we're going to go over today is, um, I'm just going to go over the Bitcoin charts and so forth as, as to what hap what is happening with price and all that sort of thing. Um, the actual market for trading right now is obviously um, pretty bad. It's good. It's good to be. It's good to be buying at the moment, but obviously trading wise, it's going to continue to be pretty crappy until um, all the Bitcoin, you know, soft fork, hard fork stuff settles down, and we get back into into normal routine of of trading and people actually spending their Bitcoin, using their Bitcoin how they would normally, and all that sort of thing. Because at the moment, obviously, markets in the panic. People don't know what they're doing. People don't know what to do, you know, so on and so forth. So, from a from a trading perspective, this is kind of like your downtime. So, hash up on your skills, rewatch the videos, go over things, make sure you understand it completely, one hundred percent, to where we are at the moment. And if you've got any questions, make sure and message me, and, and I'll step you through any questions and so forth, guys. Happy to do that while we're in this sort of period as well. Um, so, just going to go over the Bitcoin chart we went over last time. Um, <clears throat> this was, we've now broken to the downside, the, um, the latest accelerating uptrend trend line that we had, that we drew, um, in the last session. Okay. Now what that, what that means for us is we're looking to see where Bitcoin is likely to head lower to. Okay. And this is a, this is a short term short-term bearish market for Bitcoin because of the panic in the market, okay? So I'm still long-term, um, from a longer-term perspective, if we look at, say, the weekly chart, for example, okay, I'm still I'm still majorly bullish from a, uh, from a long-term perspective. <clears throat> okay. Basically because we've, you know, We've gone from we've gone from uh, from price, you know where we where we boomed and took off and hit a new previous um, high, which was just above our thirteen hundred ish thirteen fifty ish level. Okay, from there we got a pullback, obviously, back down to about you know nine hundred ish, and then we just took off and accelerated um, massively to to almost three k in the matter of a couple of months. Okay, now. What that means is the more that price moves, okay, the more that price moves up, the larger a retrace is going to happen, okay? So always keep that in mind and you'll remember that you'll remember that forever when I say things like that. When I say things like the, the more price moves, okay, the larger a retrace you're going to expect. So that's why in our um, trading market, we've just had the massive boom from the, from the growth of Bitcoin. Okay, so that's why price has pulled back so far. Because the more that price moves, the more it's going to pull back. Okay, the uh, the the price at the moment with Bitcoin is obviously um, um, heavily bearish. This this last week, you can see we've we've basically what's today Sunday night. Okay, so yeah, sat Saturday still probably in some parts of the world. Um, or early morning Sunday in most parts as well. Now, technically, with with this big um, bearish candle, this means the market is heavily focused on selling Bitcoin. Okay, because what people have been doing is they're just buying, buying, and buying, and buying, and then when the market starts to come down, people start panic selling. Now, you know, people are saying, "Oh, I, I've so, I saw so many posts today on Facebook about Bitcoin being below two thousand dollars." I just I, I had to laugh because we've literally gone from 900 to 3,000 in like two months. Like that growth is ridiculous, okay? You can't expect that growth to continue to grow at that rate. It just it just can't happen. It won't exist. It doesn't happen, okay? There's no such thing as a perfect market. The perfect market doesn't exist because things like this happen, okay? So no matter what happens um, over time... We're always expecting two steps forward, one step back. Two steps forward, one step back, okay? Because as more and more... The good thing about Bitcoin as opposed to other methods of trading <coughs> is Bitcoin has a dollar value tied to it. And the dollar value comes from supply and demand. 
the more Bitcoin gets exposed in the market, the more news events that happen about Bitcoin, the more things that start accepting Bitcoin as method of payment, the more countries that come on board and, and, and legalize Bitcoin as a, um, an actual currency and so forth, all of that is great news for, for Bitcoin. So that all that does is strengthen the overall um, market sentiment for people to buy and want to get invested with Bitcoin. Okay, so think about it from a very long term asset. It's it's going to continue to rise over time, and we're setting ourselves up to learn how to trade forever. You're always going to hit these periods in the market where things are going to happen. So from a um, from a leaving your job quitting point of view. Okay, you need to be, once you get enough capital, you need to also have enough capital to be able to sustain during slow periods like this, okay? So what I did when Bitcoin price got to, you know, between $2,500 and $3,000 US, I started cashing out some of my Bitcoin. So if we do have a slow period in the market like this, I've still got money for months ahead of time that I don't need to touch my Bitcoin. So therefore, I don't need to panic sell I don't need to sell off at any at any any low values. I can just hold whatever other Bitcoin I've got and wait for the market to come back to, to, to normal again, okay? So moving forward, I'll be adding that into the course as, as a part of the, the risk management and my actual strategy moving forward over the next few years, okay? And um, I'll get into that more once we get back to a normal market. Because at the moment, most people's funds are going to be tied up they don't really need to know about that sort of thing because all that's going to do is add pressure to themselves because they think that they're not going to be um, hitting correct targets and so forth while the market's in this condition. So what we're going to be seeing with Bitcoin price at the moment is from a short term, um, <clears throat> from our most recent low, which was our, from a, from a longer term perspective, our most recent low, which is around $900. Okay, we draw our Fibonacci retracement tool to the top from the low point to the high top okay and what we can see here is basically this week we're going to be testing the the 50 percent fibonacci level now from an altcoin trading perspective that's our minimum buy entry criteria okay so if i was to be buying into bitcoin at the moment this is where i would look to start sort of entering the market okay Realistically, I think we recapped last week or something like that. And if you're not in Bitcoin yet, there's no real perfect time to buy Bitcoin to get started because you don't know what's going to happen with price. We can only draw technical analysis. I mean, technical analysis does not lie, but it doesn't always come to fruition the way that um, the way that we draw it. Okay, you could be waiting. You know, for, for a price to retrace like this, you could be waiting months and months and months. In those months and months and months, the market could take off again and spike to new highs, and you could miss out on first of all buying at a at a lower opportunity, and then second of all not trading your money and trying to increase your Bitcoin via trading methods for the next bull run. Okay, so if you're not already in Bitcoin, there's no real best time to buy Bitcoin. Just get into the market and don't stress about price at the moment. Bitcoin is is <clears throat> going to be, you know ridiculously huge in value in the coming years who knows what it's going to hit i mean i'm i'm freaking excited to see <laughs> to see where it goes because I'll tell you what if things if things take off again like they did um this last couple of months if if that happens again like you know that 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 that's sort of ridiculous terms and that sort of stuff is gonna you know basically like it's gonna like pay off my house and everything like i'm not gonna have anything to to spend money on, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's that big of a deal that something like that. I'm expecting in the future that <clears throat> anyone that knows about it and and is is involved in it, I want people to be exposed to the market as much as possible because of this op. Like this opportunity is ridiculous. It's like it, it's like it's like gold mining back in you know early 1900 days, late 1800 days, and so forth. This is this is the gold market 2.0. Okay. Cryptocurrency is gold 2.0, put it that way. And we're striking it rich at the moment in a, in a booming market, and we're at the beginning of a booming market as far as market capitalization is concerned. Okay, so we just need to keep an eye on price, keep an eye on what's happening, and then um, 
You know, if you're not in, buy. Basically. Buy anytime, doesn't matter. Now, what we're looking for from a shorter term time frame is we're expecting a move back to our 50% retrace and our 61.8 retrace are the two most common professionally um, used percentages by all professional traders all around the world. Okay, these are the two most um, two most common levels that everybody looks for. Okay, your other levels, you, you know, your your 38.2, which is a very strong um, um, price level indication. If price bounces off that level, you expect a, a, a larger up move and, and so forth and so on. So, 50 and the 61.8 is the two most common. Um, percentages we're looking at in terms of a professional day trader or even a even a swing trader any trader in the market every single course online I don't care whether it's free paid um, you know YouTube whatever anything online you will learn about Fibonacci retracements and these two percentages are the most commonly used okay so they are a massive technical analysis factor that we need to take into consideration, okay? Along with obviously our support and resistance levels and trend lines and so on and so forth. So anything between these two price points, okay, is where I'm expecting a uh, a continuation on the bullish front, okay? Now that all depends on what happens in the next two weeks because we are... We're just over two weeks away from our deadline for the August 1st stuff to happen. And then whatever happens from that point onwards, that, you know, that will then, once that part of it is worked out, which can take up to a week or two, that part is done. There's no more panic in the market. People know what's happening. People will understand <clears throat> what has happened and so forth. And it's only going to be a good thing for Bitcoin long term. Okay. So anytime there is any sort of um, uh, un, you know, pe people not really knowing what's happening in the market, that is what causes the panic. It's not, it's not the fact that Bitcoin's crashing, Bitcoin's over, any of that sort of garbage that you hear people talking about. It's just the fact that people don't really understand um, what's happening. And to be honest, they don't really need to understand 100% um, what is happening because they'll still do whatever they do based upon um, human emotion a lot of the time, which is where the panic comes from, because people see price dropping off and they think, oh crap, this is it, you know, price is going to come back down to like $500 or something like that, and I, you know, for price to come back down to $500 on Bitcoin, it, I think it's, um, you know, it's, it's virtually impossible. <clears throat> so, I don't think we're going to see something like that, but anywhere between the sort of 50 to 61.8, uh, is where I think price is going to kind of stall and we're going to get some consolidation period and some sideways movement in the market. Okay. If we break below these points, you'll see here this, this green line here. This is a, this is a, um, if we go down to a lower um, time frame so you can see some more candles. So this was our previous trend line, okay, which we drew up last last session. Okay, so we've broken below that. We've come back and tested resistance on that, okay, and then we've moved more to the downside. So that obviously tells me we're going to see a little bit more downwards movement. And due to the fact that this was our previous low here, okay, guys, at two thousand. Now that we've um, now that we've broken below two thousand we could see some more movement to the downside. So the next lower targets that I think we would be um, touching base on is going to be between these levels, which is around your 1900 level, down to about your, you know, 1650, 1700 level, okay? Because that's our next level of support and resistance down around here. And if we break below that, okay, we're going to be looking to head down to our previous high which will also bring us in term with our other trend line. Okay. Our longer term trend line. Which is this green one here.
Okay, this green one. We've had three touches on that at the moment, and then we got our massive acceleration up. So if we break below our you know 1650, 1700, and our 1900 levels, expect to see price come down around about you know the 78.6 level in turn with around about 1350-ish in price, and then by that time we'll get down to basically another um, support and resistance level and our trend line. Okay, that'll give us optimal pressure to the bullish side because of all those key factors. If we then break below that, our, our long, long, long-term trend line is still in play, which is this orange one here, okay? So from this time, which was the 10th of the 8th, 2015, okay? We've had multiple touches on this as well. And then we've started to merge into an accelerating uptrend in market, okay? So that's why I've got multiple trend lines here. So I've got this long-term one, you know, which will bring us in line. If price even comes back down to that level, you know, we may see a psychological level of around about 1,000, okay? But, you know, that's all that's all pure speculation based upon previous support and resistance levels and as low as, you know, price could, could really go. Um, the only other thing that could happen and could impact price is if we get a Bitcoin... Um, a Bitcoin split, where Bitcoin splits into two coins. Now, if Bitcoin splits into two coins, we'll get the similar sort of thing, which is what happened with um, Ethereum and Ethereum Classic. In which case, even long-term perspective, okay, Ethereum still increased like hundreds of uh, hundreds of percent in value. Same thing with Ethereum Classic, okay. So even if the coin splits, long-term, Bitcoin is still in the market, Bitcoin is still a real thing. Bitcoin has still got media exposure. Um, you know, every time something comes up about cryptocurrency, people people know what Bitcoin is. Okay, um, people don't really know what Ethereum is. People don't really know what other um, altcoins and stuff are, unless they have already been exposed to Bitcoin. Okay, it's very rare if you're talking to someone that they know what, say, Ethereum is, for example, and not know what Bitcoin is. Okay, because Bitcoin it Bitcoin has the overall media exposure of everything and anyone talking about stuff. Okay, so keep that in mind, guys. That's kind of my overview on um, Bitcoin and what's going to happen with Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin price, sorry. Now, obviously, once we get back into a bullish Bitcoin market, we're going to start to see those altcoins and things like that um, skyrocketing again. And definitely, if we obviously see a new all-time high from Bitcoin over 3,000. Any of those altcoins and stuff you're holding on to now will be worth, you know, a crap load more value. Um, so don't stress about your altcoin trading at the moment, guys, until we see um, what's happening with, you know, August 1st. I've been talking about this over the coming weeks that we're probably going to see a slow, you know, a slowdown in the market, uncertainty in the market, and that's going to cause, you know, people not to be trading and, and so forth with their Bitcoin. Now, on that note, I hope everyone's done the research. I've seen some posts in the group and everything. Even I've put up some posts in the group. Now, if you don't have, obviously, a hardware wallet, which a lot of people don't have, um, Poloniex, if you only have a small amount of Bitcoin and so forth, Poloniex realistically should be fine to store your Bitcoin, okay? Because what's going to happen is they're an exchange. As long as your Bitcoin is there, um, they're going to obviously be supporting the other coin and so forth if we have a Bitcoin split because, hey, that just means more trading for them, more volume for them, more fees for them, more money for them, okay? They're going to be perfectly fine. If you're not, um, if you're not storing, if you don't want to store it in Poloniex and so forth, obviously I don't, I, I don't store my Bitcoin in a, um, in, in Poloniex only. I've also got other, other online wallets such as Coinjar and blockchain.info. And then I do have hardware wallets, which are Ledger Nano S's, okay? But if you're trying to get a hardware wallet and you've only got a small amount of Bitcoin, it may not even be worth it. Like, I had to pay $150 or whatever it was for my Ledger Nano S. And, you know, if you've only got, like, $500 worth of Bitcoin or $1,000 worth of Bitcoin, like, there's no point buying a hardware wallet that's, you know, 30% of your, <laughs> 20 or 30% of your capital just to store it. It just doesn't make sense. So, um, Google your... Google your exchanges coming up over the next, you know, week or so, guys. Make sure it's um, compatible with 
whatever happens in the Bitcoin market. If it's not compatible, move it to something that is compatible. Okay, that's the only thing that I can stress. The other big thing is I'm going to keep saying this on every session coming up to August 1st. I may even try and do, I think, I think it, I think what we should do also is probably do a live session probably on the 30th of July, which is in two weeks, just to rehash, go over, make sure everyone's up, you know, up to speed with whatever's happening because I can upload it that night. That'll give people the 31st to review it and see what's happening. And then that'll make sure all of our students are, are taking action properly and seeing what's happening. So I'll set that up as well. Um, the biggest thing to not do is trade or send transactions on August 1st, okay? Because what's going to happen is if you start sending transactions on August 1st, and for example, if you've got Bitcoin and we get a split where you're, you're going to get, um, you know, the, the, the secondary coin based upon how much Bitcoin you have, depending on the value and so forth, um, if you send a transaction and that happens, technically you're going to be losing money, okay? Because you've already sent the amount of Bitcoin. Whoever's receiving the Bitcoin is going to be eligible for the coin split and all that, you know, so on and so forth. So you don't want to be sending transactions or uh, obviously you can't, you can't stop receiving unless, like if you're in online programs that pay out daily or any of that sort of stuff, obviously that, you know, that's not going to um, matter because you can't really stop it. If you withdraw from programs online and so forth, make sure you don't withdraw around that period where you're going to be receiving money on that August 1st as well. Okay, so those are the sort of things to take into consideration around August 1st. <clears throat>